Okay guys, this is probably my fourth or fifth attempt at making a build video. Um, I always end up thinking that they're just not that interesting, so I don't end up uploading them. But today I'm going to try to do this a little bit differently. Um, so instead of doing a time lapse of the actual build and Sovereign, which is probably boring, I'm just going to go over the components, maybe do a few quick clips along the way, and then just a recap. Now, if you want to know more about everything that I'm using as far as the frame and the motors, um, see my last two videos on Ear with a Hyperlight Floss and A Tale of Two Motors, which goes in depth about the 2405-25-22 KV Team Edition. So, let's run down the components. I'm using uh, what I call the Floss 2 Mullet. Uh, and that is the Floss 2.1 6 inch arms in the front and the Floss 2 6 inch arms in the back. Now, um, I'm gonna be using the Akon 35 amp ESC with the Pyroflip F4 OSD Hyperlight board um, with the gummies installed right there. Now, one thing I wanted to note is I went back and forth on whether I should mount the board as designed with the power leads coming out this way or coming out the back, which I prefer. I do find that boards like the, uh, or ESCs like the Hobbywing or the Emacs Magnum that have both the power leads and the motor pads on the front and back are a little more cramped, but I prefer that because I want my power leads coming out the back. I, um, now if I do flip it that way, I'm gonna have to remap the motors and rotate the orientation and, and, and do all that kind of craziness. Um, but I think it's gonna be worth it just for this reason right here. If I look at using the thin um, M3 plastic nuts that I typically use on boards, what do you see there? This is too high in the back and it is hitting. Um, and that's because this ESC is a little bit wider than some. Um, so that's just not gonna work. I could use like really tall um, things, but then I'm afraid I'm gonna run out of room and I just, just don't want it that tall. Um, and then the other thing I kind of played with is if I did have the motor wires coming out the back, I'd probably zip time to this, but then I have these sections like just sticking out and I, I don't love it. So just to make it easy, I'm going to flip it like this. And like I said, I will have to do all of the motor remapping for that, but oh well. But as you can see, this fits just fine. And it does not come into contact uh, with the carbon. It's a good few mils away from the ends of the arms right there. So this is my first time using the Akon. Uh, I have used the Pyroflip uh, Hyperlight F4 board on my last build. Um, this is essentially gonna be the primary racer and that one that I already have is gonna be the backup. So XM Plus receiver right here, uh, Luminar Axi um, antenna. Gonna go with the Unify uh, HV Race Edition. This is where I'm gonna probably, I may use this, I may not use this, and I'm probably just gonna flip the board like this I've done last time and just stick the uh, Unify on top of that. Um, I'm gonna use, um, this is the, the new um, Foxier Aero Pro. I also have a Predator and a Monster Micro. So it's gonna be one of those three. I haven't tried this one yet, so I think I'm gonna try this because it's blue. Um, I also have a blue Monster Micro. I'm gonna figure out which one's best for racing. I may leave that Monster Micro on the Master Drone that it's on. Of course, I'm gonna use the 2405 uh, Hyperlite Team Edition motors, and then just some other random stuff, the standoffs and the little camera holders right there. So uh, let's get started and see where this goes. The first thing that I'm gonna do is loosely attach each motor with just one screw so it's in place, but I can still kind of move the wires around. I'm gonna go ahead and solder up the motors to the ESC. I'm not gonna put the standoffs on top, so I have a little bit more flexibility. I can move it around if I need to. Then we'll go ahead and install the flight controller and start wiring up all of the other accessories. Okay, so I now have the motors soldered up. 
Um, now it's not the greatest job ever. Let me see if I can get this to focus. Um, but it'll do. I did my wire extensions the other night because these were slightly used motors. Um, and that's another good point, guys. You can get some really good deals on the used market, especially right now with everybody going to 6S um, because people are just getting rid of like almost brand new gear. As you can see, these motors look super new. Look, the nuts look like they haven't even been used. So I'm not even sure if these were even flown um, more than a pack or if even that. So got everything installed. I'm gonna go ahead and add the standoffs here now and uh, we'll move on to the flight controller. Now here is one note. I'm gonna use two different soldering irons. So this is the TS 100 portable soldering iron. I use this in the field all the time. That's what I'm gonna be using for the flight controller, camera, receiver connections. But for these motor connections I just did, I actually used this cheap $15 eBay um, soldering iron. And the reason for that is this actually gets a little bit hotter, it goes up to 450 degrees versus the TS100, which only goes up to 400, and the tip's a little bit wider. So for these larger gauge, uh, 20, uh, 20 gauge wires, and bigger pads, you want a little bit more heat and a little more surface area so you can get in and out and then boom. If I was trying to solder these bigger connections um, with that tiny one, it just it would have to stay on there a little bit longer and you run a little more risk of, of burning up a pad or something like that. So um, I had this from before I got that and I was a little disappointed that the smaller one didn't handle these bigger connections as easy, um, but it does give me a chance to use this old one for this type of stuff. Now I do really do appreciate, um, even though I was a little irritated with the Acon having the pads on the side, I do really appreciate that the um, power leads are already soldered up and look, and also all of the motor um, pads were already tinned with a beautiful shiny tin just like this. Um, so that made it so much easier than having to apply your own solder to a naked pad um, and it's just like boom two or three seconds and then you have a nice solder joint and I think these are really uh, gonna last and stay strong I've always had issues with uh, my solder joints not being super awesome I'm getting better this is probably the best I've ever done uh, so we'll see if this holds up on to the next piece Okay, the next thing I'm gonna do is wire up the XM Plus that I've opened up from here. And I can never quite remember uh, what order these pads are in because they're not labeled at all. But um, don't forget that it comes with these instructions that tells you what order it is in. So it's S bus five volt ground um, on the side where the antennas are on the top facing to the right. So if I pull that over like this, S bus is the square pad um, that you can see right there. So S bus five volt ground and that's what we're gonna do. Now that I've tinned up both of these, um, I keep a little box of just random wires that come with other stuff. So I'm just gonna cut a length of this um, and this is already red yellow and black and this is what I'm going to use uh, for this XM plus okay I got these soldered up and they're gonna kind of lay in the same orientation but I'm gonna actually put the receiver on top of the ESC um, now to protect it I'm also gonna add this heat shrink I used to just kind of use some double-sided tape and put them on top of the flight controller or somewhere or on top of one of these uh, little boards like this um, with uh, a zip tie but uh, I had an instance where I had a crash and it broke that zip tie and I ended up frying my receiver when it touched a piece of carbon I think on one of these and uh, I don't have good luck fitting this and the XM Plus on, on top of one of these, that's really how I would prefer to do it. And you could see it would it would fit, um, but then you're covering up the holes. So I can either try to do it like this with three holes, uh, but it doesn't really work that well because I'm actually gonna put this on the uh, on the receiver, or I'm sorry, on the flight controller. 
So I don't know. I'm still trying to play around. Where do you guys put your receivers? I'm trying to play around with this since I'm switching to a non Emacs Magnum or Hobby Wing um, setup. Okay, next I went ahead and wired up the Unify. Now I used one of these cables um, from Pyroflip. This is a Unify cable that's like 99 cents from them. And uh, I'm not sure if this is the one that comes with it or not. Uh, I actually got a couple of these used from somebody that was moving to Crossfire. Um, but I really like this because this camera side actually plugs straight into any Foxier camera. So all you have to do is take out this blue wire, that's like a voltage sensor that I'm not gonna use, and then take out the white wire, um, which you're gonna use for your smart audio. And the power flip board wires up pretty nicely. It's just uh, video from VTX, VBAT ground and smart audio uh, at the top. And then at the bottom, there's just one of the wire, which is your camera wire. So I just split the yellow wire here um, to put one on the VTX side, one on the camera side, and that limits your soldering. That probably saved me a good 15 minutes, maybe 20. Um, so now everything's ready to just be plugged up and mounted. Um, so I'll go ahead and start doing that. I checked my wire links on everything. And I think now that I, I look at this Acon, it has a really large component there that sticks up. So I won't be able to mount my receiver there, but I think I figured out a way to where I'm gonna mount the receiver on top. Um, one of the snag I hit was that the antenna that I had was actually MMCX, but I wanna use this Unify. So I had one of these um, uh, vast minion antennas uh, laying around that I hadn't used. So I'm gonna go ahead and and try that out, see how that goes. Um, so let's keep on going. Now it's just time to put everything together. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna lay the Unify um, double-sided taped there. Of course I have my camera wires coming up there. Then, uh, and then here's the Unify connector and it's gonna come like this. I'm gonna put these standoffs on top of this, and then this board here, and then the receiver is gonna go all the way up here on top of that. Uh, let's see if that works. Okay, so I pretty much have this put together now. So the way I ended up laying everything out was Unify uh, right above the flight controller stack there, um, I also had all these cables kind of going from the uh, ESC to the flight controller. I rerouted them like on the same level that the Unify is right there. And I put a little bit of electrical tape just to kind of hold it. I ended up putting the receiver on the top. That's not my favorite. Um, I really wish that I could have the Unify on the top, but because of the standoff sizes that I had, this just wouldn't work. If I put the receiver here and the Unify here, it'd be too tall to be able to put the top plate on. Um, so I got the camera hooked up, which was fairly easy. I used the included cap with this Acon 35 amp ESC and just put a little heat shrink around it. I tried to get it not right on where the e XC60 is. Uh, as I always do, I got a really big size zip tie to kind of uh, put these to uh, provide some stress relief for these power leads. Uh, here is the Minion antenna. It's not really my favorite place to put an antenna, but those Axie holders are not gonna work for this because this is much smaller. Um, so I have it zip tied here. Also here, I put hot glue around the UFL connector up there and a little bit of electrical tape just to hold the lead on. So we should be okay there. So now the only thing left is for me to swap the motors uh, in, in Butterfly. I'm actually gonna use Butterfly, not Betaflight for this build, just like my other one. Um, and so that should be fairly easy to do. And the rest of all my settings, I'm just gonna copy over from my uh, previous build. Um, that I did, which was the one that was featured in the last video, which was this one. So I had intended to build up this one to be my primary before this weekend's race. Just didn't have time. Um, this ran great. Didn't break anything uh, <laughs> for once. 
Um, so now I have this one I think is going to be the primary with the Akon and this one is going to be the backup which is the Hobby Wing. I'm going to run. Now on this one I have the cap installed under the arm uh, with a little bit of wire. I don't love that so I'm going to try. I've seen a lot of people doing this. I'm going to try and see how this works for me. I'm a little afraid it's going to get knocked off in a crash or something but we'll see. Now I'm kind of wondering if I should have orientated this to the other side but oh well it's too late now all right guys so that's it i'll put some flight footage at the end i'm not going to show you how to set up uh swap motor directions and whatnot if you want to look at that look at one of those joshua barbo videos this thing should fly just great um i was very happy with uh how easy all this went together and if it flies as good as this one on Butterfly, I'll be plenty happy. So I guess the next thing I need to do is compare the Runcad Micro Swift 2 to the uh, Foxier Micro Aero Pro and see which one I like best. Thanks a lot, guys. Bye.